up guys? So today we're going to be talking about prom since prom is coming up. Hopefully this is 2020 and we have no idea what's going on, but most proms happen around April in the springtime and well for here in the south where i live and sometimes it's hard to find that fine line between um, what's considered too much pda when you're posing your prom couples so basically i just want to talk about how to create um, closeness and intimacy you know boyfriend girlfriend type stuff without too much pda and you can achieve that with a number of things but posing the way you shoot, like your settings, and if you're shooting through stuff. So we'll go through all of that. But first I wanted to say there will be a downloadable checklist in the description, and um, it's just gonna go through some tips and some posing for your reference, different poses that we actually, I'll get in depth in posing in this video, but uh, there will be more poses on the checklist. This is basically the first in a set of prom videos that I'm going to be releasing to really help you have a more successful prom season this year. So my question of the day is, what are you struggling most with? Posing, lighting, um, how to get your settings in, shooting in natural light. So just let me know in the comment section. So let's get into the video. So first you want to establish the level of PDA that you can have with your uh, clients, which would be the parents and your prom subjects. Some parents and some uh, teenagers have an extremely lenient level of PDA that can be displayed and then some don't want to see it at all. So you need to establish that because they are the ones basically allowing you to take pictures of their children um, and paying you to take pictures of their children. If it is established that there should be little to no PDA, then this is definitely the video for you. The first thing I want to get out of the way is to make the shots more intimate more meaningful, you will want to shoot with a wide aperture. I shoot wide open all the time. I've practiced it so much, it's not that difficult for me. For some people, you really need to practice it. Doing it really isolates your subject from the background, which will create the intimacy, and it grabs your attention more. This is also important because the way that I pose, I am actually taking that into account that I'm gonna be shooting this specific way, so I'm gonna be posing this specific way. For a variety of shots without much PDA, consider shooting from different distances. For instance, you could do the basic pose of having them, you know, like shoulders together, or maybe holding hands, kind of heads together, and you shoot kind of close up, then you shoot like a bust or mid, and then you shoot full body that's going to already give you some variety with the same basic pose. Once they're in that position, you can then switch up. You can have one of your subjects look at you, the other subject looking at them, and then get different distances that way, and then switch it up. Have the other person look at them. Still keeping the same basic pose, you can have one of your subjects whisper something funny into the ear, and you don't have to get them super close, but whisper something funny into the ear of that person that's looking at you, and then vice versa. There are so many different things that you can do with just basic posing. That basic pose can also be converted very easily into the female putting her head, leaning her head onto the shoulder of the male. And of course, these are things you're gonna have to talk over with the parents. Hey, is this a pose I can do? And I would just get it all out of the way, ask the questions. Can they hold hands? Can they put their shoulder, put her head on, on the shoulder? Can you do, you know, just ask the questions ahead of time and get that out of the way so there are no problems during your shoot. Once you've done that pose, you can actually have the female put her hand, so she's still got her shoulder, her, uh, her head resting on his shoulder, then she could put the corsage arm up next to the boutonniere and you can get that. It's still in the same basic pose. And I keep saying same basic pose because I wanna nail down that you can get a variety of different poses within that same range of basic. After you've done these, you can start to switch it up by walking shots. So you can have your couple hold hands. One thing that I like to do is give them some sort of direction. So I'll tell them to walk towards me and then I'll say, look at me or smile at each other or say something funny or, you know, I'll give them some prompts. So basically you're gonna wanna prompt them as they're walking towards you to make sure that you're evoking emotion or happiness or laughter or whatever and giving them direction at the same time. You can say stuff like bump hips together or one person try to bump 
the other person's hip and the other person try to get away. And that's gonna create a variety of emotive shots during the walking process. You of course would wanna make sure you get some of them walking that way and walking towards you. I've found with walking shots, it's best to do a couple times, like two or three times of them walking away and walking towards you. Tell them to look at each other and talk junk to each other. That's usually a fun one. You can have one of them look at you and tell the other one to look at the tell the girl to look at the boy or the boy to look at the girl. It's just, you know, just do different things as they're walking. These are simple things that add variety. Another thing you can do that's super dreamy are bias shots, which means you get one person's bias with the other person kind of blurred out. Or so basically, let's say that you have a couple holding hands and you have the guy looking at her and the girl looking at him. You shoot from behind the guy, so you get him kind of blurry and you get the back of his head, you shoot over his shoulder, whatever, but you get her face and you just tell them to say something funny to each other or you know, whatever prompt you want to give. Then tell the guy to turn around and look at you and smile while she's still looking at him and blur her out. Then go from the other side shoot from her sh from her back her shoulder this also creates a level of intimacy with just a couple holding hands and having fun together you could have them swing around and like once you get your basic shots done you're gonna have them like they twirl around or whatever and people just tell them to have fun you know they're teenagers they're gonna they're gonna be having fun anyway some teenagers can be awkward and can be nervous especially the guys which is another reason why this whole posing thing is very important with the bias shots and stuff because you can still get great photos of each person without that awkwardness of just kind of like standing there like <laughs> you know like the, the guys are just kind of awkward in high school you definitely don't want to forget the detail shots because they can also add variety so you could get the girl with the corsage which customarily used to be the left arm um, now it's whatever arm I guess but you could have her holding his head and them just looking at one another and you could be shooting from that direction and get just the corsage in focus especially shooting at a wider aperture like I previously said you could have the girl put her arm up and hold the boy's chest uh, where her corsage is near the boutonniere. And you can get like a super close up, real artsy shot that way from different angles. Then you could also back off and get the whole, like the bust shot and then back off and get like the full body shot. You could have the couple holding hands with the corsage hand and get just the hands holding. Um, you could have like, if you're at a, a park or something, flowers in the background, shooting at a wide aperture will blur the background out so there won't be distractions. It'll just be like a dreamy, uh, scene just pops of color back there and it would really highlight the hand holding and the corsage so if you want more posing ideas make sure and download the uh, checklist because now I'm going to go into ways to add the variety you could still use the same basic poses if you wanted in different places but this is going to add more variety to your shots which seems it seems like it's more posing but it's actually you could use the same poses but just different stuff. So you'll want to have a few locations in mind within the same general location you're at. Like if you're at a public park, a lot of them have different things like bridges, flower gardens, little water features, brick walls, cement, like all kinds of stuff. And most of the time these parks are going to be like crowded, tons of people, and it's going to be the middle of the day so everybody's going to be there <laughs> so it, it can be difficult so you need to have different spots in mind of where you're going to shoot so a bridge a lot of them have bridges and the wonderful thing about bridge shots is you can get the perspective shot so you can get the couple directly in the center of the bridge and you're kind of like shooting from a low angle and getting that you know the bridge coming at you and have them directly in the center and it always looks really really good and then you could have your couple kind of on the edge, like where the railing is to the bridge, maybe holding hands, talking to each other, laughing, and you could go around and take from a different angle far away. And so the bridge is kind of like this, and they're here, and you're taking from this direction. Taking from that direction and not having the couple look at you kind of creates a mystery and also creates intimacy. So a bridge allows you to have the perspective shot, have them looking at you, and you know kind of a further away shot that's actually not that intimate and then you can use that same bridge that same location to get a more intimate shot and this really adds it's more impactful than you think when people are looking through their images you could then move to a flower background you know like i said prom is basically spring so there's usually a lot of flowers blooming and 
shooting with the couple you know further away from the background with the wider aperture is going to allow you to get pops of color in the background or the creamy bokeh it just creates more of a dreamy scene then you could move to walkways or footpaths or you know whatever else you're the park or the location you're you've gone to can give you and my last tip on posing is shooting through things so if you shoot framing the image with foliage or flowers or I mean anything, wine glasses, I've done that at weddings. But when you shoot through things, especially foliage, it creates pure dreaminess in my opinion. It just adds that like layer of foreground, it adds that layer of mystery, or it just establishes and nails down the location, or it can even change the location. For instance, let's say you're in the middle of a city, but there's a tree, you've got some trees behind the couple, and you've got a tree in front of the couple that you're shooting through. You can create like a forest, a dreamy forest scene in the middle of a city. Another cool thing about shooting through things is you can still get your distance shots. So you could actually uh, get your couple full body, bust, kind of close in with each other, heads together, shooting through, having them talking to each other, holding hands or swinging each other around or whatever. And so basically you can go through like your same basic posing, shooting through something, but it's going to look completely different to the couple, even if it's the same pose you did 10 minutes ago when they get their gallery. One tip I will say is do not use on-camera flash when you're shooting through stuff. I go into, I'm gonna go into detail on why not to do this and one of my other prom videos is going to be titled something like how to shoot a prom session. I will link it up here. When I actually make the video, I'll go back and add the link and in the description. So anyway guys, I hope this video helped you. Do not forget to download your checklist. It's gonna have a lot of different poses in there and I will see you guys next time.